All right. Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice to see you all. Ooh, get these on the right way. Mm, no, I think I liked them better the other way. I don't know. It changes night to night. What I like. All right. Okay. Hi. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you guys. This is awesome. I'm so excited for you guys to meet this incredible, wonderful lady. Let's just shoot her a text really quick. All right. Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Cade. Hi, Jordan. Oh, man. Yes, you definitely don't want to miss this live. Oh, my gosh. This is about to be so much fun. I'm so excited. While well, we're waiting on Madison, who has ordered their virtual camp shirts? I love this shirt so, so much. It was designed by one of our members, JR. He's fantastic. Uh, I'm doing well, Jordan. Thank you very much. All right. Madison is here. Bring her on in. Camp sticker, yay! Yes, I love stickers so much. Here's Madison, hi! Hi! How are you? I'm good, how are you? I am doing so well. <laughs> now, now I'm doing so well. Oh man, I'm so glad to finally actually like talk to you sort of face to face. Not exactly yeah. face to face, but close enough, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Woo! Oh, you got some fans in the comments section here. Woo! Go, Madison! That's awesome. So, Madison, oh my gosh, people, we've, we've been talking about you all week uh, over here at Spintronics, obviously. <laughs> we've been talking about you for a long time, actually, uh, but the fans have been talking about you for the last week or so, very excitedly, as you can see. Welcome to the Spintronics gang, Kate says. Hi, Adam. Adam's here. Okay, so let's dive right into this with some questions because we got a lot of questions for Madison. And they're not there. I have to pull them up on my phone, apparently. So have you had a good day? Yeah, pretty good. Nothing much, so. Honestly? That's a good day, I think. <laughs> a lazy day. <laughs> yes. I don't want to say those are my favorite, but those are good to have once in a while. They're pretty good. I kind of feel like you're kind of like I am, where I love what I do so much, I, I kind of turn into a workaholic sometimes. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, it's that's pretty, I tend to like devote myself to one thing and then I just stick with that one thing and it just turns into my life, so. <laughs> they, they say, they say that that's actually like an addictive behavior, but as long as you focus it on something positive for yourself. As long as it's good. Exactly. As long as it's <laughs> Exactly. Okay, so. We have um, Jess CG three six four eight and wants to know where have you spun? What previous teams have you been on? Um, I spun in high school, and then after that, I moved on and I did a year at Gold in twenty eighteen, and then I I went and did indoor percussion visual ensemble for a year at a lawn, and then I went to PC Pacific Crest, and then I marched Fantasia A. And then I marched two years at RCC, Color Guard Fall. And then I did a, and then my next season will be with Spirit of Atlanta. Yay! Oh, I love Spirit. I have so many friends who marched there. Oh, I'm really excited. So you guys can see, like, how incredibly impressive of a resume this is. And how old are you now? Um, I just turned 20. Yeah. So, like, I have Seriously, that's an impressive resume, especially at 20 years old. <laughs> yes. Um, so what's being a color guard at RCC like? I think this might be somebody who's like thinking about joining RCC. This is a uh, Kimberly XC. Okay. Um, 
I, I RCC is one of the best groups I've ever marched with an amazing organization. They've been in the business for a long time with fall and just doing marching band. And I believe like it's one of the most well-ran organizations I've ever been a part of. And I think that just makes things simpler on a member's position. And you just, you basically, it's such a great season because we don't do anything competitive. Dude, there's never like this fear of like, oh my gosh, scores. And so you just get to really enjoy the activity for once. And I think that's like the main reason I keep coming back every season because you just, you don't, it, there's no stress of, oh my gosh, we have a show this weekend, that weekend. Like, it's more of like, okay, we get to go to the football game, have fun, watch watch the game, go perform halftime. It, I honestly, it's like, it's a vacation in like marching years, I guess. That's an awesome way to look at it. I, I wish more people coming into their college guards would look at it that way because like I, I know I didn't when I was that age I was like oh I'm so competitive if, it, if we're not competing it's not worth it and now I'm like now I'm older and I mellowed out and I'm like man I really kind yeah. of enjoyed just had fun spinning exactly and it's like I get I get to spin so many seasons other ways and teaching and stuff that like I can I can waste my competitive energy on that and like focus that all there then it's like RCC is just it's a lovely time Awesome. Uh, so, do, so do you teach other uh, color guards now? Do you have like your own teams? Yes, I teach at three schools currently. I teach at a middle awesome. school and two high schools. So, yay! Oh man, you are busy, busy girl. <sighs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, let's see. Rhoda Blah wants to know what is your favorite trick. My favorite trick. I love blade turnarounds on saber. And I don't know why, because I can't do turnarounds on anything other than flag. Oh. They just work. I think it's because of the way the, like, saber rotates. But it's just, like, if it literally one day I just tossed it and catched it. So after that, I think I was like, okay, this is easy. I got this one. <laughs> That's so awesome. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I can't, I can't do turnarounds on saber myself. I probably could if I worked at it, but Free, but I worked at it. <laughs> Uh, so that goes into your, um, this next one is like, what's your favorite equipment? Saber. <laughs> no doubt. I think it's pretty apparent, especially on my, my page itself. But I think I, at Fantasia, I only spun Saber and a little mm -hmm. bit. So a little bit of like a quarter of the show on like rifle and then of course, flag feature. But I think after like this last season of like being like primary on like saber, I was like, wow, like I got to appreciate things and tricks that I've never like experienced before being on like other weapons. So I think I definitely, definitely enjoyed it the most. <laughs> what is some advice you would give to anyone who's thinking about trying out for saber? Definitely getting over the fear factor because I think once you get like the biggest part about saber is and the most you hear about Saber, it's scary. It hurts. And I think, like, once you, like, throw that away and you go, okay, yeah, I'm going to get some, like, bumps and bruises and stuff, and it's going to hurt the first five times I catch it, it gets better. So you just kind of have to, like, throw it, throw that out the door in, in a sense. Don't, like, completely. But getting past the fear really helps. Do you hear that, Josh? Josh Eckloff is here talking about how scary sabers are. Okay, we have some questions in the question box, too. Let's go ahead and hit those. Ooh, this is a good one. Winter Guard or DCI? I have to say DCI because it's like a fully immersive experience. Like, you, it's like every single day you wake up and it's eat, breathe, sleep, like, everything drum corps. And I think, like, that really, like taking that time out of like my year it's like it, I look forward to it every single time where like winter I'm still doing I still have college to work about still have to like everything else so I, I definitely DCI so you like that putting your life on hold just like okay everything else just yeah, pause. like a resort vacation but you're going and like <laughs> just have to think of like the good things I get to travel the country for a whole summer <laughs> exactly it's like it's like a vacation for people who really love color guard marching band um how about this one 
This one actually has been asked several, several times, but I'll pull it up on here. What got you into guard? My mom did baton in high school and my, my high school marching band didn't have like anything of that sort. And I did dance and gymnastics and such before. And I was like, oh, well, I really want to do something in high school, like a sport of some sort. So my mom recommended me to try for color guard because it's like around the same idea and it uses the things that I've already like kind of worked on in life. And that it kind of just took off from there. I, I just started like marching and then my mom was like, Ooh, there's also drum corps. We should check this out. And then I it exploded. From there. <laughs> That's so awesome. Oh my, so you can twirl baton then too. Yes. I did baton in high school as well. Once I, my junior, senior year, I ended up like, taking baton lessons and doing all that. So I dabbled in that for a while. I haven't done that in a while, but. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come back to you like riding a bike though, right? If you just picked up a baton. I think it would. I think cause I still like spin and stuff. It's pretty mm -hmm. much ballpark. So definitely not how some people out there can do it. They're crazy and amazing, but. So you follow k then? <laughs> yes, I follow <laughs> all the, the baton girls cause like, in high school, that's what I wanted. I was like, this is beautiful. This is, but I definitely found my niche, so. That's awesome, awesome. Um, so here's another one. If you had one thing that any of your instructors said and it stuck, what would it be? What is something that has just stuck with you that your instructors have told you? Definitely, like, practice how you perform. Okay, there we go. Definitely. <laughs> like how you perform because like I remember being like early into like color guard being so terrified like the second I stepped on the field like I was like like fear struck and I couldn't do anything and then like I finally like started like taking the time to like think about like my performance like on the field when I don't have a crowd in front of me it became so much easier for me to like oh, okay, I have this fear already. I've already experienced this, like, in my head. So it became, it just, and then as I went on and did more years of, like, drum corps and such, it it just kind of, like, got easier. It got easier to step on the, fo like, floor of the field and, like, just perform and not worry about it because I did it eight hours ago in practice, so. Exactly. Oh, that's so great. That's so, so great. Uh, so how many, how many times would you say, I don't know if you, if you're someone who keeps track, how many times a, a summer would you say you perform with your drum corps? Like how many performances do you have across the whole summer? In open class, I did 23 shows in one season. Okay. In world class and at PC, I did, I think we ended up doing 28 performances like all together. And you just kept so, track of those. So did like, they tell you that? We, uh, we, I remember in 18, we just counted them on the back of like our show shirts and then like figured okay. it out. And then I think we counted them in last huh. summer. Um, what was your best experience that you ever had on the field? Definitely walking into like Lucas Oil for the first time, like in 18. Mm. The tunnel experience, just like, oh my gosh, like, it was unreal. Because in, like, especially Lucas Oil, like, the seats just go on. So, like, you're looking into the seats, and they just keep going up and over. And you're, like, in the banners and everything and the crowd. It's just, like, like, as, like, coming from someone who did, like, little, like, color guard and, like, went on to do bigger things, I was, like, oh my gosh, this was my first, like, big, like, arena experience. And I was, like, okay. <laughs> It definitely, like, the second night, it gets, like, a little more nostalgic, and you kind of, like, but the first, like, Focus walk, in. <laughs> I was like, goodness, like, this is what I want to do. That's awesome, that feeling. Now, have you, have you performed, you, you performed at, uh, you said you are at Fantasia A, so you guys did, like, uh, world championships there, too, right? We kind of, we, we had, a, a, like, our championships was, like, in a bigger, like, I guess we, a bigger high school. We never really, cause we didn't go okay. to Dayton. So. Okay. So you haven't had like the Dayton tunnel experience yet. Not yet. 
I didn't. Okay, so so guys, come back for that later. <laughs> Once she's had the dating experience, we'll compare the two. <laughs> um, how about this? Do you ever zone out while you're performing? Jordan tends to think about food. Um, early, like definitely, like I remember, like blacking out, like blacking out. I guess mentally, like in performances where you're like, did this part go good? I don't really remember. Uh huh letting like muscle memory but like again like the practice how you perform I think it like let me like relax so I could finally like enjoy performing and like enjoy like spinning so I think early on yes definitely like I remember like walking out the field and being like did that happen like did I do something here funny I don't remember but like now I can kind of like look back and go okay well this happened during that run and I need to work on this so I guess it gets easier. <laughs> I tend, tends to happen less. Yeah, and, and you kind of figure out how to focus that energy, right? Like you have all that energy yeah. and like you can't handle it at first. And so you just whew, muscle memory. Yeah. Um, Josh wants to know what was your worst injury? In the summer of 18, I, our first show having left California, I, we were like in this little town, like somewhere doing like just a small like DCI show and we're warming up. Literally the first toss I took on flag was like a 45 and a half, like, but we caught to the back and I smack my nose, like first thing in the lot, like the first, and I end up breaking my nose and like bleeding all over like our white, like uniform. And I was like, that was the worst day of like, cause hitting, getting hit like hurts, but getting hit, like in the face is like always like not a good time and you said it was right before the show too yeah we were like in the warm-up like i just took my first toss and i was like it was not a good time oh that's rough you're trying to like get in your right head space to perform and you're like like trying to focus in and then like to have something like that happen that just i'm sure that threw you off yeah Did it definitely sucked but like of course you you end up like forgetting about it in a week or so once you're on tour so <laughs> right did you end up did you end up performing still yeah, yeah it, it, I don't remember how the run went but I definitely remember like coming <laughs> off of, I'm gonna go lay down or like <laughs> I'm done for the day so that's probably a good plan I had a question I remember that came through on he on on my somebody actually like messaged me a question I just remembered about it I'm trying to find it guys keep the questions coming in the question box if you got more I do have one here um what was your favorite show I let's what was your favorite show to perform let's say that um like venue or like overall like I think like like theme yeah theme I have to say probably PC 19. So Everglow. So it was just a really like cool abstract. I have never done like an abstract show before. Like, I've done like kind of with like gold, but like it was my first like, oh my gosh, like this is like a really cool concept, a really cool uniform, a really amazing guard, a really amazing staff. So it was kind of just like everything was like perfect. So is that the one that your profile picture is from? No, I think my pro no that that one's from RCC, which okay. is all. But no, this is from DCI. So my last summer. It says there's more. Oh, okay. Here's a good one. Uh, J Bat Joker wants to know what were your favorite costumes. Probably my overall favorite like favorite costume was probably PC 19 and then probably RCC 2018 we did a Mad Hatter or no the year before we did um like magician uniforms but they were really cute like half skirt dresses they were really Aww. pretty and then after that probably Fantasia we had the we had really cool like gold capes and it was just a really good theme Ooh, capes man was that hard to spin with Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like behind the back work, I like 
because it was a loose like it had like a shoulder attachment and then it was just like a piece of like fabric and like I remember being stuck like with my saber like caught in it and just like doing drill because I was like trying to like struggle to like rip it without like ripping the uniform yeah and, like getting it out and I was like I just came in for like a toss or something I was like <laughs> it was just difficult oh my goodness um Levi his screen name I'm sorry I'm super blind his screen name is presses um he wants to know how did this happen how did you get to be a, a part of the Spintronic social media team <laughs> I, I, so from I, your point of view what do you think how, how did it go <laughs> Honestly, like, everything that's come to me with, like, TikTok and, like, Instagram has been crazy. Because, like, I literally just started this to make, like, 30-second videos and, like, just, like, content that I I enjoyed. And it kind of turned into me kind of being like, oh, okay, I can do this. Like, I can – people asking me questions and such. And then you reached out to me, and I was like, oh, my goodness, this is, like – this is kind of cool, like <laughs> – reach out and like branch out and do different things that like I hadn't had the opportunity of before because I had I just spun color garden <laughs> that's pretty much it had you ever thought about like being an instructor like before you started putting stuff online were you already oh, teaching yeah I was already teaching but it was kind of just like making like a it was kind of just, like, doing my own thing, like, watching, like, other videos and, like, stuff to, like, gain inspiration, of course, and, like, see what's what's not in my bubble, I guess. And, like, but now being, like, able to, like, share what's in my bubble and, like, showing, like, sharing my skills is kind of, like, I never thought I would be, like, doing that. Yeah, it's it's weird, isn't it, how different it is once you start, like, putting that sort of stuff out there. Because honestly, what you're saying about how you just wanted to create content that you enjoyed, that's literally how things started for me on Spintronics. I was like, I'm just going to teach, like, put things out here that I like and put my shows up here. And then it was like, well, people started asking me, well, how do you do drop spins? How do you do this? How do you do this? And then that's literally how it happened and how it took off. Like, and it's, I don't know if you notice, it's kind of a big thing now. <laughs> like, it still blows my mind. Um, but you know, and we and we wanted basically we needed help, and we we need more people that are that are able to do this. And so, from my perspective, I was like, I really like Madison's style. You know, she's already literally doing the kind of thing that I like to see, and I'd like to have as a part of our group. So, I'm just gonna call her. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see here. What's your favorite thing to eat before and after a show? Definitely in my bus box during like DCI and stuff, I had sugary treats like galore. And like, it was just like, so anything sugary, anything like, I guess like candy, I would, I was just remember like shoving like a few in like my warm up bag and just like snacking on them throughout because why not? I need a little extra sugar after doing like a, whole day of drum corps and then going to do a full show like especially on days that's like back to back to back and then afterwards definitely the same thing or like chips or like anything that's kind of like just like be able to like chill out and like relax finally yeah so you like sweet before shows and then salty when you when you want to relax yeah. that's interesting i like it Let's see here. Uh, Claire, Claire Jean wants to know, what state are you from? And I love you so much. <laughs> I'm from California. So all the way over here on the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, you're so far away. No, oh, I'm far away from everything. <laughs> Honestly, though, it's funny because so much of Color Guard comes out of California. There's so yeah. much there. That There's so oh, Yeah. Like, we There's have a lot of space here, and we're like, wait, why is California way on the other side of the mountains? We have, like, ten drum corps alone, like, just in the state of California, and then so many DCI and, like, WGI groups that, like, start here and audition here. It's crazy. Uh, have you ever performed in the Rose Parade, being in California? No, I have not yet. I'm really... RCC 
does it from time to time. So eventually, hopefully I get to, but I actually have never, so. I've, I've performed in the Macy's Parade, but never the Rose Parade. When did you do the Macy's Parade? I did it in two, what was it, 2019, or no, 2018 with Are RC you Oh, with RCC. I was like, I was like, you weren't in the Macy's Great American Marching Band, were you? And I just completely forgot. No, with RCC. <laughs> I was going to feel really bad and be like really upset with myself if I had just completely spaced on you being in the Macy's band. I try to remember all the Macy's kids, but it's hard. It's hard. You see them for one week and then you don't see them for years. So. <laughs> um, what's your life like outside of Color Guard? Adam wants to know. Mostly school and mostly that's pretty much it. <laughs> it's like school and friends. So dividing the time, but all of my friends and all of like my close like people to me, they all do band. So we're practically all in the same bubble. So it's like we go from marching together to hanging out together to like pretty much that's it. <laughs> What's your major? I am a data intelligence major. So Ooh. yes, fun stuff. Okay. Okay. I see you. Um, let's see, field or parade? I'm assuming for DCI, field or parade? I actually have only done like three parades in my lifetime. So I don't have much experience like doing much parade, but I definitely have to say field because that's where I'm more comfortable and I just enjoy the aspect of like spinning on a field with a bunch of band. <laughs> it's so, it's so good. It's so good. Okay, guys, keep the questions coming in the comment in the question box. Um, this one's not a question, but Everglow was the first DCI I saw in person and y'all were amazing. We saw a DCI at UNT Stadium. I love that show, but mostly because the field was completely shaded and it was like mm. really nice. And I remember, I actually remember that show because that was the first show I got to watch a crown lot in. So I was like, I was really happy. <laughs> but. Yes. Um, okay, here we go. So we're going to start testing your instructor knowledge a little bit. How about this? Any advice on handling writing choreography for guards? then practicing your for school and then going from school and work afterwards basically time management like you have to figure i remember like when i would be going to class going to like dance and stuff and then driving an hour to go to like my kids and stuff to like teach and then driving an hour back to like go do go do like my own band at rcc and it was like i remember like having to like man it's just time management like right out your schedule for the day and like a lot and don't over promise yourself what you can't do so don't like try to teach like seven schools and march and and have your own school life and have your own social life because it's just not possible like i wish i could i wish i bet everyone wishes they could but it's just not possible <laughs> definitely honestly like that's that's the best advice you could give is don't over schedule yourself don't take on too many things because that's something when I was your age I literally was doing that and I was just like why do I do this to myself I'm like marching all summer I'm coming back and I'm teaching like six or eight guards in the fall like this is and then and then I'm like working full-time and going to school full-time and it's just no that's not like this do you see these bags under my eyes it's a <laughs> no it's not a good time um, Alex says, do you want, do you have to be female to March Macy's? You do not have to be female to March Macy's. We usually have uh, one or two boys every year in the Macy's band. So you just don't ever like notice cause the, the costumes are like, uh, what do you call it? They're unisex costumes. Yeah. They're parade uniforms. So they're pretty. Yeah. Um, Adam says, I don't have a question, but I enjoy your TikToks. Thank you for cop commenting on my TikTok that I did. <laughs> 
Thank you. I honestly, like, I try to reach out and comment as much as I can because I know that, like, it means a lot. Like, it means a lot to me that you're, like, people are even, like, sharing or liking or, like, commenting on my stuff. So I always try to, like, put my best out there and, like, just respond to as much as I can and just, like, know that I hear and read every single one of them. I'm not kidding. (laughs) (laughs) That was one of the things. That's, like, why I started doing the guard instructor reacts because I was, like, here I'm seeing all of these videos and, like, I like, like, I'll I'll hit the like button, but, like, what kind of effect does that give? You know, you, you just going and commenting on somebody's video is, like, wow, they saw my video. They liked enough to say something about it. So like, that's awesome that that you are, that you're recognizing that, especially as a social media, as a social media person. Yeah. Um, How about this? Any advice for people that don't have good confidence level, but they want to try out for independent guards? This is actually a piece of advice that I got from an instructor this last winter audition. So for Fantasia auditions, it's A and World together, so you audition for the same group at the same time, both groups at the same time. And that way, World staff gets to look at you as well as A staff, so you kind of get a really good ballpark of where you are and what you need to improve on. And one of the instructors came up to me, and he, I was talking to him, he told me that you, a way to make like someone else's choreography look good is make it an act act like you wrote it like basically perform like you wrote it and you know every single step of it inside out and it makes you just more comfortable with what you're doing so even if you look and feel uncomfortable then like staff is easily going to pick that up like in an audition especially so you have to kind of like pull it out of yourself and be like okay i can see how this flows together in like such order And it it definitely has helped me, like, now on, like, auditioning other places and, like, even, like, performing other choreography, so. It's good, too, to get instruction from so many different instructors. Like, just the fact that you've been so many different places, like, appeals to me because you're not like, oh, yeah, I was, you know, you hear some of these people who, like, march one drum corps for, like, seven years straight. They're really good at doing that style, but they're not flexible to be able, like, you know, maybe they marched, I don't know, Phantom Regiment or something for like seven years. And then they're like, okay, I'm going to go age out at cadets. And it's like, oh, now you have to march with your right foot first all of a sudden, and they just can't handle it. Yeah, definitely. Like, and being able to like gain knowledge from so many instructors, like, like people on the East coast that have taught on the West coast and vice versa. It's like, and these adaptive like exercises that you learn and stuff that are like, just like, I would have never thought about this. I would have never done this back home. So like anything I can. Uh, What do you want to do for the next season? The next season, I'm actually taking a little break just because I'm teaching like multiple schools this semester and just like trying to focus on making Fantasia World like this upcoming season. So I'm kind of like focusing a little bit on my like personal practice and improving myself rather than like going and just like marching and doing some choreography with RCC. So I'm going to basically take a season off from RCC and then focus on my kids and myself. Honestly, I mean, that's a good thing. And I think a lot of people, they get upset at people for taking a season off or they feel like they get upset with themselves. Like I I can't take a season off because it's just going to be the end of the world. And I think what they have to realize is, like, you can go back, and yes. it's okay. Yeah, definitely. And, like, I have I have years left in me for, like, for WGI and DCI. So I'm not, like, pressed, I guess, about it, like, that I'm, like, losing. I'm not losing too much. I'm, of course, it's, like, it's a shame that I can't march. But, like, at the same time, i rather not, sh- of course, stretch myself too thin and overpromise myself where I can't. Right. Right. Yeah. You don't want to get that burnout of it. You know, it's something you love to do. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite food to have in California? This is so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> love seafood, I guess, in a way, but I like sushi and stuff. So definitely sushi in California, like on the beach, is like pretty good.
Oh no, did we lose Madison? Or did we lose me? Oh no, we lost Madison! All right, hold on. We're gonna make it back. I know it's not me for once. Normally it's always me. All right, it's all good. It's all good. We'll get her back. We'll get her back. Guys, I hope you're enjoying this. I'm having so much fun getting to know Madison. Uh, as you can see, she's just awesome. I'm very excited to have her as part of the team. So basically, I want to kind of talk about um, what exactly Madison's role is going to be on the team. Uh, so she's going to be making, creating social media content. She's going to be creating videos, instructional videos for our YouTube channel. And tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. So that would be, hold on, I can do this. That'll be 10 a.m. if you are on the East Coast. That'll be 8 a.m. if you're on Mountain Time and 7 a.m. if you're on Pacific Time. Um, and you will be able to see her very first instructional video that she created on our YouTube channel um, she teaches you guys how to catch a toss behind the back. So it's going to be really awesome. I already saw it. It's a really good video. It's all ready to go. Um, like I said, we've went ahead and, and we've got it ready to put up. Uh, hopefully Madison's coming back. Her phone may have died. I'm just, I don't know. That's kind of what it seemed like. But um, I, I am really excited to have Madison join the team. You know, as you guys know, like we've been doing so much more. Uh, the live stream every week has taken a huge chunk of my time up. And also I've joined, um, I've joined several different committees as part of the Color Guard Instructor uh, Educators Conference. And so I've been doing, putting a lot of work into that stuff, sort of starting that whole organization. Uh, I'm still doing stuff for Spintronics, and on top of everything else, school is going to be starting back in less than a month, which absolutely just blows my mind that we're going to be going back to school because we haven't been in school since March. And, you know, so I basically, with everything that's been going on, we decided to open up another spot and have Madison come in and start doing these instructional videos to just kind of lighten the load a little bit um, as, as we're going back to school, going back to work and that sort of thing. So uh, that's where her, hers comes in. And she's not texting me back. So I'm going to assume that her phone probably died. And um, I'll go ahead and close things out here. Hopefully, Madison, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. But uh, hopefully, we'll get to talk to you again soon. And everybody, I hope you guys are looking forward to her first video out tomorrow. Next week, we're moving the live stream to Friday because we have a very special guest who we have to work with his schedule um, with Michael Rosales is going to be on the live and we're going to be discussing the breakdown camp. So if you guys haven't taken any breakdown camp classes yet, then that's what uh, we're going to be talking about there. And basically, like, if you don't know about Michael Rosales, please go check him out. He is an incredible human being and he does so much good stuff for the color guard community. It's, it's really amazing. He also, he's the choreographer for Santa Clara Vanguard drum corps. So those of you drum corps fans out there, yes, he's, it's going to be a good time. Uh, same time, eight o'clock central time, but on Friday next week. So guys, I will see you then. And Madison, I will hopefully talk to you soon. <laughs> guys have a good night.